Welcome back to Doom Builder. Uh, this episode is just going to be a like a straightforward mapping and detailing session. I don't have any specific topics that I want to cover or any tips to to explain unless something comes up unless something comes up as we're mapping. But what I really want to do is finish this outdoor area so we can move on to the next area of the map. As far as layout, this is pretty much done, but it still needs a little bit of texture work. Um, especially the secret area needs to be defined better. Uh, we need to do maybe a little couple things with the middle of this building. First thing I want to do is just like in the last episode where we broke up this cliff, I want to do the same thing over here behind our switch. So I'm just going to mostly do this without commentary, but you know, follow the same pattern. We're going to create this outdoor area, come up along the side of our building, let that open up. Copy this floor. Do something like this. Add some jagged regions behind it. Split this up a bit. and vary the heights. Get rid of all these missing textures. Now I'm going to uh, do our sky effect on the back. Draw a line across the back here. Turn enhanced rendering off so I can see what I'm looking at and grab these back sectors. Bring them all down to the floor. At least to the floor of their respective sectors. There's probably a faster way to do this, but I'm not dealing with that many sectors, so I'm just going to do this by hand. I mean, I guess I could always open up the sector properties dialogs for each sector and just type in the ceiling value to match the floor. That would be one way to do this. I'll just do that in this last one just to show you what I mean. Floor height's 192, so we'll set the ceiling height to 192. There we go. I also saw all this still has a damage effect. Um, I think, just for cleanness sake, we're going to turn that off. This is an unreachable area, so it doesn't matter, but this is not intended to be damaging floor. I don't like having extraneous sector effects. Because uh, when you look at that on map, as a, as a mapper, that might confuse you. Okay, lower regions, we're going to bring this brightness down to 160, I think, is what we did before. Some of the higher ones, 176. Just so that each sector is a different brightness than its adjacent one. You're mostly going to be able to see this from this building up here, so if I look out here... We need some more height. It does look a little bit weird, so I'm just going to grab this one... The one next to it, make these a little taller. So now if I look at it through this window... There we go. Now it doesn't look so weird next to this thing here. Now this area we can't as easily do this to because it has this region down here. There's actually map behind this. Um, we could do some stuff with some little sectors on the front and drag those down, but I just don't think it's worth the effort here. I really don't. So we're gonna we're gonna let this be how it is. Just like before, the front of this cliff needs to be impassable, one-sided. So, impassable flag, shown as one-sided on auto map. And everything behind it needs to not show. That'll do it for cliffs out here. Next area I want to address is this yellow key building. There's not a whole lot going on in here. Um, I think we can just add a light source and some computer panels and we can call it good. Let's go back to map mode. 
I'm going to draw a light here that follows the 64 by 64 grids so that our ceiling flats align. I'm going to come back here real quick, see what I've been doing for lights elsewhere. Okay, we're using this blue light thing, flat 22. I'm going to copy that and just paste it up here. I could have used any light texture, but I want this to be visually coherent with the rest of the map. So I'm looking for details I've already done. I'm gonna grab this, what is that, Sean 2. I'm looking for details I've already done and I'm trying to replicate them just so that the map has a like a consistent style. I'm gonna bring this brightness up to 192. Maybe brighter. Yeah, let's just do full bright. We'll do 256. Really give this room some contrast. And let's put a computer panel on this wall. I think we'll keep this really simple. Going to drop a couple vertices. There's one already there. So we're lined up with the 64 by 64 grid. We know this line is a multiple of 64. Let's look at our computer panels and we can just do... You know, let's do space wall 3. This kind of looks like... It might be some kind of uh, oversight, not oversight, overwatch area, like this is a guard tower. So it could be that you'd have a row of monitors just to allow you to, I don't know, watch some stats, watch some security cameras, uh, something like that. This is a little weird on the left with this divider texture, so I'm going to put a little eight length thing here. Bring this back up so we're at 192, so it's a multiple of 64, so our texture doesn't wrap weird and put a little eight length line def there. Grab these two eights and we're going to change it to doorstop. Get this little silver divider texture and get our uh, monitor row realigned by resetting the texture offset. I don't like how this extends into the floor so to fix this I'm going to create a region behind here. I'm going to bring the floor up that we're at a multiple of 64. Put our monitors on here. I'm going to bring the ceiling down to touch and this upper texture is going to be comp span. So now when we look at this we have our row of monitors and then we have you know just this generic computer panel above it. These back lines I'm going to make these not shown on auto map. I just don't want any chance of that rendering on the map and confusing players because this sector is just so that we can do this effect and have two separate textures on one wall. This is not an area the player can go to. Front one, show is one-sided, impassable. And I think that's really all this room needed. Just a couple details, add a light, put a computer panel in, and this area's fine. The last thing we need to address before we move on is this secret area up here. This is, uh, this is not working yet. <laughs> The question is, do we want this to be an extension of the rocky cliffs, or do we want to keep some kind of tech-based theme? And I think it's, I think it would look pretty good to make this more cliffs. I'm going to go ahead and copy this texture here, this rock, just start pasting it everywhere. Maybe out, everywhere outside this divider can become rock. That already helped a lot visually. Um, let's copy this floor over as well. Do that. And actually, if we were to do this, I think this central region needs to be part of our cliff top. Let's just go ahead and extend this around here, like so, and we'll break this up a bit. Continue this just pattern of like jagged cliff face things. Uh, bring our heights back up. We get to where you can see. Let's get these all nice and varied in altitude, elevation, height, whatever you want to call it. Synonyms. Yeah, we're going to create our sky backdrop. We're going to 
Put a little bit of depth here first. Grab each of these sectors, bring it down to the floor. Let's do our thing with brightnesses. And last and certainly not least, these lines need to be one-sided impassable. With everything behind not shown on the map. Okay, now when we look at this through the tower, the secret area uh, it just looks like an extension of this cliff and I think that looks pretty decent. Let me auto-align all this. Now we just need something of value up on the secret. This may change later, but I think for now we're just going to put a soul sphere up here. And I think that covers it for, for this episode. Uh, I'm pretty happy with how this outdoor area has turned out. Uh, just kind of breaking up the cliffs made a huge difference in how, how detailed this area looks. So uh, let's wrap this up uh, next episode. I think we'll start on the next set of spokes. Thanks for watching.